Hey everyone, I have a very exciting interview for today. It's actually a follow-up from last week. One of the things I love about the One Rental at a Time YouTube channel is I get to help a lot of people, but also very talented individuals offer to help me. So if you remember last, video, last week's video about brand, uh, we are going to look at the One Rental at a Time brand and see if we can't take it to the next level. So let's welcome Stace to the show. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. It's, it's good to be back. It feels like just yesterday we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, man, you, uh, you lit a fire. You, you had me asking questions I'd never thought about. Um, but for the audience, let me set up what One Rental at a Time is currently in its current form, because I think it's going to be important to see where it, where it started, where it is, and where you know we might take this thing together. So um, One Rental at a Time was frankly not built with a not built on purpose, right? I started investing in rental properties after suffering some very big stock market losses. I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur, right? Solopreneur, entrepreneur, never saw myself running companies. Um, I, was, I was raised to think success was being a VP in a company, right? That's why I went to school. Mm -hmm. That's why I got an MBA. It was all to climb the corporate ladder and eventually earn that VP title, right? That was success to me. Along the way, I lost a bunch of money in the stock market, started my journey down one rental at a time, which was just buying a house. I had no grand plan other than, hey, if I got four or five, my life would be better. Fast forward 15 years and lots of highs and lots of lows. Uh, you know, you earn financial independence at, at a relatively young age, 45. You quit work because of some bad politics and you're left with being a type A person with no rudder. So I was, a, I was a weekend away from getting another job because I was pretty good at what I did. But I realized if I did that, I would be failing, right? Because I had just spent 15 years getting to this point. I should give it a shot. But the problem is when you wake up on a Tuesday or a Thursday at six o'clock, none of your friends are around because they're all still working. You can only play so much golf because it's really not that enjoyable for me. I had to find something to do. So the first thing is I wrote the book, One Rental at a Time which has so far, far exceeded my expectations. Uh, thousands of copies being sold, copies being sold every day. From that, it led to a YouTube channel because you know, I'm okay sitting in front of a camera and just going. I don't edit videos, I just talk and then publish. And then ultimately that led to a course because so many people were asking for help. Like, what'd you do? How'd you do it? So I created it. Um, and now we're to a point where you know, YouTube is, uh, you know, I do three or four original pieces a day. Thousands of books have been sold, hundreds, almost thousands of courses being sold. And I'm sitting here thinking I could do more, right? I think the one rental at a time has some uniqueness. And it was our conversation where I was like, you know what? If your goal, Michael, is really to help the most people, I think Stace and what he's doing is something you should consider. And we both took the challenge. So I'm going to turn this over to you and uh, see where we go from here. Thank you. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, just to give people at home a, a little bit of background. Um, so I, um, in, in addition to being a real estate investor myself, um, I run a branding agency and we help business leaders better articulate what they're good at, the values that they have, the, the, the values that they bring their, their customers, and we, we help them focus on their, their core um, differentiators so that they can really stand out and, you know, build a loyal following of customers and audience members and be able to command premium prices, you know, um, whatever, that, whatever that might be. Um, but the conversation we had last week, um, you know, I was asking you some questions because so, I was on, we were talking about branding, and there was one point where, um, you, you turned it around and said, hey, let me ask you some questions about my brand. I was like, oh, this is fantastic, right? Um, and, and so afterwards, I know we had a conversation earlier today where you said, hey, th those questions you were asking really helped me, you, you know, it helped me see things that I hadn't thought about in, in, yeah. in the past. And, and that's a, a pretty common reaction because as entrepreneurs or doers, like, like you're saying, yeah. you tend to just roll up your sleeves and jump in and do the thing. You might be driven by a purpose but you're not always able to articulate it, or maybe, maybe you don't need to. If you're if you're a solo entrepreneur, you might not need to share it with a team of employees about this is why we're doing it, this is why we're, we're driven by. But when you're able to focus on the thing that you're that you're best at and the the problem you want to solve in the world, you're able to share that with your customers 
in a way that helps them identify like, oh, he's the guy I need to work with, or this is the product I need to buy because they care about the things that I care about. So that's what, that's what we do. Um, but what we're gonna do here is um, an abbreviated live version of a branding workshop. And um, brand workshops um, are typically for us a, a four hour intense, very collaborative session with our clients working one-on-one, -on -one, singing across from them at a table um, and asking them deep questions about their business to get to the root of what drives them and what's going to resonate with customers in, in ways that's gonna set them apart from everybody else who's doing what they're doing. So this session is not a typical branding session because, you know, just the nature of it, um, you know, we, we have a limited amount of time. Um, but I sent some questions to Michael ahead of time and he's, he's answered those and he was, he was very kind to write his own mission statement. Typically, that's something that we would do together, but just in the interest of time to get that going uh, more quickly. This is like the cooking show where they already have the chicken <laughs> in the oven and they take it out. It's already done. So we've done a little bit of the work ahead of time, but... I am going to put Michael on the spot and ask him some questions um, to, to gain some clarity. And I'm going to share with him some thoughts that I had when I looked at his podcasts, all of his media, the, the, his, everything he's written, the book, like blog, um, you know, the, the courses, all of that stuff. And we're going to gain some more clarity on, on his business here. Um, so the first thing we did was I sent him and I'm going to share the screen now, Michael. Oh, this is going to be uh, fun. You're going to share the audience with what, uh, what I share. That's going to be cool. Awesome. I right. love this virtual so, workshop. And again, this is what solopreneurs, you know, that's why they're going to reach out to you because you're going to help them go to the next level. So let's, let's see, let's see what we did. Absolutely. And so the, the first question I sent you um, was about what's wrong with the industry. Like, why do you feel motivated and compelled to do something. You talk about helping people and you're like, hey, obviously people are not being helped in a way that's working for them. So I can do something different. I can come and add value. So I said, what industry problem is one rental at a time focused on solving? And the answer you sent back to me was this. You said, the real estate investment industry is based on flash, complex information and star power instead of simple step-by-step -step process that focuses on brief and consistent daily execution. I underlined two phrases there because I'm like, I'm thinking these are things that set you apart. So um, what were you thinking though, when you, when you got the question and how did you get to this answer? Um, well, first off, I broke it into two parts and it's kind of how I wrote it there. One is what was the problem in the industry, right? And I, when I thought about that, I thought way back to, you know, myself in the eighties, right? I've been doing this a long time. And in the eighties, it was all about the infomercial on TV. And there were people that were, you know, hawking real estate investing, and they were sitting on a, a yacht with a bunch of girls in bikinis. You know, that is more to today where it's the Ferrari or the Lambo or the, you know, the, 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 the you know, the showing out in, in clubs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I've actually been told by people, yeah, it's people that I respect that I would get a lot more following if I showed my fancy car and showed some of the nice stuff that we've bought since I retired, but I've done none of that. Uh, because I don't want this to be based on flash. I don't want, if you're following me because I have a nice car, I don't want you to follow me, right? I want you to follow me because I sacrificed for 15 years. I live below my means. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but I'm giving you a, a plan and a, a path. So that's, that's the first thing. Next was complex. A lot of people in real estate talk a foreign language. They talk in acronyms. They talk in ways that the recipient, if they're not really in the industry, is going to go, oh, wow, you're really smart. I should follow you. And again, I don't believe real estate investing is any of that. In fact, I think the more complex you make it, the riskier it is. And then finally, the star power, right? They're, the social media world we are in today, when you become uh, a magnet, you know, you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers on various platforms, you pretty much can call yourself an expert in anything and people will follow you because other follow you. Mm -hmm. um, none of that makes me feel good. Uh, you know, I built my track record one day at a time, 15 years in the making, plenty of ups and downs. And uh, I don't want to be a star, right? I want to help people and I'm fine, you know, frankly, staying hidden. So that's how I broke it up first. What was the problem? And then I asked myself, just frankly, what did I do? right? What is my unique capabilities is I can execute something daily, 
right? And, and I really do believe you can learn a market in less than 20 minutes a day, which is not what everybody else says. They make it complex and, you know, all this time and all this nonsense Excel worksheets and stuff. And I really do think there's a step-by-step pro step process to do it, right? You start with a focus, you execute on that. And then over time, that focus grows. Um, and that's exactly all that stuff is in my course. You know, it really came from my book when I researched what we do, how do we do it, right? I invested in a market that I never lived in. I didn't know anybody. So if I can do it in that kind of market, step-by-step, step, I know anybody can. And that's you know, unfortunately not sexy. It's no flash. It's not complex. It's frankly easy or simple. Maybe it's not easy, but it's simple. And, um, you know, I'm not a star. So that's, that's how all that came together. That took me about 45 minutes to write probably. I mean, that three lines. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's important. And it, and it, and it does require, you know, sitting back and, and thinking about think, thinking about like real challenges that people face. Um, it would be really easy for you to say, Hey, I achieved these things. And, um, you know, without explaining to people how you did it or the challenges that you had, you know, um, I think that's somewhat some of the, some of the stuff you're getting to when you talk about flash or star power. It's these it's these things where it's just like too easy or too too too, too good to be true. Yeah, it's just like show up and it's going to happen, and and it's not that way. But what was important to me about this the statement is the step by step process and the consistent daily execution, and and those things seem different to me or at least they're differentiators compared to a lot of what i hear when i i because you know i'm looking for education myself because i'm i'm an investor but i'm i, I would like to be a, a better investor um so i look for education i read books myself i look at you know like oh coaching workshops and th th these things too and it's the step by step i think that i find a lot of people are, are missing and that's something that's unique to your brand so that's something that I want to help us incorporate more into not necessarily the work that you do, but you'll see later on, there's a section. The last thing we'll talk about is um, I've taken some of the messages on your website and offered some um, revisions to them. Cool. Hopefully you don't mind too much. No, that's, that's why <laughs> so we're doing Mike, this. <laughs> Michael hasn't seen them. I'm just going to surprise him with what I've done at the end, but it's, it's very minor stuff, but no. you'll, hopefully you'll see how it all works together. Just stay uh, again, just so you, you can, you, if it sucks, tell me it sucks. I am, you know, again, I put that website probably hasn't been updated in a year. So my story and all this stuff's evolved. I've, I've come to you because I want the help in leadership. So yeah, you no need to sugarcoat it just because this is going to be recorded. Uh, just put it out there. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the second question I wanted to ask you is what business are you really in? What, when, when you think like, this is the thing I do, if you had like the short sentence of this is what I do, what is it? Uh, you know, just off the top of my head, not seeing this before, I would think I am in either the inspiration or the confidence building business. Um, and, and I don't know what comes first. I believe a lot of folks, you know, I think one of the, why did I write the book? Because I wanted people to believe it's possible, right? When you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when I, and I've read it 20 times. You know, it changes my mindset, but I don't believe anything's possible, right? You, you learn a house is not an asset. You learn about a condo they bought in Honolulu or Oregon somewhere. So I wrote my book for to create belief, right? It's possible. Somebody can, can actually read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, change their life. And over time, you know, you get somewhere. And then when I've talked to people since being out of work right now, I'm full time and I just help when I can. I think there's a lot of people that lack confidence, like, okay, I know it's possible. Congratulations for you, but I can't do it. And that's just nonsense. Everyone can do it. It's a very proven, it's a simple proven path. It does take sacrifice. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's simple. And I've now proven with students since I've had the course less than a year, they are doing deals, even in this market that is uber competitive. And they're doing great deals, which makes me very happy because I call deals bad, average, good, or great. And they're doing great deals today. So that's what I think. I think I'm in the inspiration or confidence building business. Excellent. And um, I, would, I would say that people who are like the, the stars of the industry would probably also say they're inspirational, mm. but in a different way. It's, it's, the, it's the realism or being able to make things possible, the practical nature that sets you apart from somebody who says, 
you know, it, it inspiring me to believe that I can own 5,000 units in, yeah. in a matter of weeks if I just buy this, you know, $50,000 course or whatever. This is, this is very different. Yeah. And, and again, the one that always gets me, because again, I see a lot of 20 somethings go in this direction. It's when the person has the Lambo or Ferrari or the private jet behind him. Yeah. Come on. That's, you know, sure that's possible, but why don't we talk about, you know, the first couple of steps about, you know, paying for their electric bill or their car payment or, sure. you know, something else. It's, yeah. I think it's dishonest and it just makes me sick sometimes. So that's, that, that's a good segue into the next one. What do you feel obligated to deliver? Because we're motivated to do things for ourselves or for our partner in life or our family or our employees or our customers. Like we create results because we feel compelled to do it. There's this, 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 this feeling like we, not that we owe something to somebody, but we're responsible to do something. What is it that you feel obligated to deliver? I feel obligated and I've always felt this way, no matter what career I'm at, is to share the honest, unbiased, unfiltered, uh, my opinion, right? Uh, one of the, my most frequent phrases when I was leading teams was any question could be asked uh, and I'll answer it, but I can't promise you're going to like the answer, okay. right? Uh, and and that's, what, that's what today is. And again, one of the reasons I love doing my daily financial news now, which again was inspired by Gary Vee over a year ago, is my opinions change as data as information changes i reserve the right to to change with it so my unbiased opinion changes or has can change every day and i again one of the things i love most is on saturdays i do a live session where i just have people throw questions at me and again same deal right i'll answer them but i can't promise you're going to like them um and i think that's i think most people in this industry the the answer is always buy my course I don't want to say buy my course almost ever, mm -hmm. right? I don't need it. I don't want it. But if you want to do the work and get started, yeah, you know, I'll mention it like once every fifth video. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want every word out of my mouth to be buy my course, buy my book. I don't need those things. I think they're wonderful. I think they help people. Uh, but I'm just going to keep, keep being me. Excellent. So who do you, who do you think that you're best able to serve? Because one of the things is like, so we understand our capabilities, our talents, our knowledge. And as, as business leaders, we want to be able to reach a certain group of people because we want to apply those things that we have to a certain, certain pool of, of people. So who do you think are the folks who benefit most from your message? I think it are the individuals that were me 20 years ago, right? Busy professional, busy family life, wants a better future, right? It's maybe someone who's got stuck in the rat race or what I call the middle-class mindset and just wants to see a way out. Mm -hmm. If you are sitting there, you know, and you're quote unquote successful, right? You're, you're just above broke as job means, right? And um, you want a better way. The one rental at a time message should resonate. It's not flashy. It is a path to a better future. And if you stay at it long enough, financial freedom. So I think it's that person, right? It probably is not great for somebody who's looking to be a wholesaler and get, you know, 10,000 assignment fees. And because I only talk about to the earlier question, what I've done, I stay in my lane. I get, I get asked questions all the time. And sometimes the answers are, I've never done that. So no idea, but you know, maybe it's, I would go here if I wanted to, to look at it. So I think that's it. Excellent. Um, that's, that's interesting. You know, the, the idea of, of staying in your lane is something that co comes across when we're, when we're doing these workshops, we, we don't ever want to limit anybody to um, limit their, their potential, any businesses, but you have to understand what your focus is and you can't take everything on. You, you can't solve every problem. And there, there are things that you're going to be really good at. Um, exercises like this help people drill down and say, especially if you're starting a business, I have to, you know, just your audience knows you've been at this a long time and you've already established a brand. And you said you never went through this process, but you do have the basic elements and you have them inside of you. And even if you've never articulated them or expressed them to, to your audience or anybody, they're, they're there. And that's the thing. Like, so if you were starting this business from scratch and we went through this, it would, it would be, very, it'd be probably more helpful then. I mean, like, you know, they say like, when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago? When's the second best time today, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, 
so some of these things you already feel and you're already doing, but um, I just want your audience to know that like if you're in the process of starting a business and you, you don't really know who your target audience is, this process will help you get down to the point where you can focus on one group because you can't attract everybody and your message is not going to resonate with everybody. And trying to advertise to attract such a wide audience is is really expensive and it and it's it's um it's it's not as productive as as you'd want it to be but like staying in your lane is is critical knowing your lane and then staying in it yeah awesome um but something else that's important and something we we try to um make sure that our, our clients know is that you have to show people your intention so being intentional is one thing but communicating your intention helps build trust and confidence in you so the way we suggest people do that is to communicate their intention um, through their marketing, through the actions, through the way their customer or the way they their employees interact with their customers. So, how would you say that you show your intention? How do you how do you let customers know what's driving you? I honestly, I probably don't. This this is probably a whole. Um, I've never even thought about this. Again, I as we said earlier, I'm a pretty good doer. And I sometimes think doing, doing something long enough will just get you there. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think on any of my platforms, I think it maybe comes up occasionally in the Q and a sessions. Like, why are you really doing this? Like people are looking for a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, you know, this, you, you can't be that guy, right? You, there's gotta be something you're going to hook me with later. But other than that, I don't, I, I think, honestly, I don't think I've ever, let customers know what drives me. I don't think. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's, that's not uncommon. So don't, don't feel too bad. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that's, that's critical. And it's something that I even try to put into what I do and daily, whether it's, you know, with my family or with working with clients, I'm just like trying to ex explain so I can, you can tell people to do something, but explaining the reasons behind it helps them internalize the, the, the reasons that you're, you're, you're asking them to do that, and then they start to believe it. So I'm I'm trying to think of an example just so we can make it real for your 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 customers here. Mm -hmm. If if you were to, so I know you have a your product is two ninety nine, right? The one ninety nine, one ninety nine. Um, but let's say you were to increase the price fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. If you were to just do that, you would have people who who saw that and just they'd go ahead with it because it's still not a lot of money compared to a lot of other programs. But if you were to explain the reason that you're increasing the, the, the value is because like I'm putting this other I'm putting this other resource in there or you're going to sure. get access to X, Y and Z. That's just a, a you know, small example of when we explain why we've done something, um, it, it helps people to, you know, have a positive reaction to it. And it helps them see, oh, wait a second. He's only raising it $50. <laughs> you know, this is, I'm going to get something great out of it. And yeah. another example might be, you know, so, and you, I don't know if you've done this, but um, so occasionally I have to raise the rent on my tenants. And sure. Some, yeah. <laughs> I've had to do that um, a few times. Yes. <laughs> so um, I, I've come up with a new process um, and just to show my intention. I, so I don't just say, hey, um, everything's more expensive in the world. So you, I'm raising your rent $50 or $60 or $12, whatever it might be. What I do now is I use Rentometer to show people how rents have increased in the, in the zip code or the neighborhood in which they live. Mm -hmm. I exp explain to them how my costs have increased. I'm, I'm specific about it. And so I can say, you know, because a lot of this is like, so my tax is going up. That's public record. Not that anybody's going to dig into that, but like, but it's there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'll explain to them, this, these are real costs that I can't, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't do without. Um, and then I, I also show them, you know, I'll <laughs> send like links. So I'll, I'll craft an email and put links to like Craigslist listings for other apartments in the area. Ah. Because I want them to see them. I'm like, here's, I have to raise the rent to, to this price and here are the reasons. But if you're not happy with that, here are some other places. And I usually try to be honest and pick a range of places. Yeah. It's like, so that they see what I'm giving them for this rent is still reasonable. So sure. um, just, just being intentional in, okay. in, in that way. Um, and I so, think this is one, again, it may be coming later, but if, if we're going to go redo my website, this is something that needs to be front and center. Cause again, I, there's, there's a lot we could put there. I was just 
never cognizant. And this, this is, this is a gap for sure. So thank you. Yeah. So, and we don't have to be overt. You don't have to say the reason I do this is mm -hmm. it can, it can just be by taking the values, which I'll show you later, some values that I've, I've come up with for your brand and making sure that those are represented in the messages. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't have to be over it, but you'll, you'll, you'll see that it all makes sense in a minute. Um, the last question I wanted to ask you here is like, if you weren't there, what would you want your customers to say about your company? You know, so like, that's like the ultimate, like fly on the wall sort of thing. It's like, like they, they, they don't believe you're going to hear them. So no one's going to say something <laughs> nice to you. And you. You talk about, you know, like unbiased opinion. What do you want people to say about you? Uh, I would want them to say that he cares and he's, he's helpful, right? He's, uh, he doesn't over promise and under deliver, right? He, he under promises and over delivers. Mm -hmm. Those would be, that would be what I want to hear. What I want to hear, you know, they're fond of me and all that stuff. Sure. But that's, you know, very much a secondary. I, I'd want to hear basically anything like I'm in a better place for having followed him. That's, that's really what I want. Cause again, I financial freedom is this big movement fire financial independence, retire early is a big movement, but it's a truly a journey, right? Our journey was 15 years, lots of forks in the road, mistakes were made. I just want people to say I'm better off for having followed him. That would be, I could go peacefully knowing that. Excellent. So that this idea of helping people feel like they're, they're, they're better off, like truly being better off, but also the, the, the feeling that they're, they're more confident. Or yeah. That to be, to be clear, right. They don't necessarily have to be financially better off, but even if it's very early for them and they're like, Oh, I get it. I spend too much money on this or that I'm better for having listened to him. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's where this all starts. Right. Yeah. I believe financial freedom, the financial journey starts usually with cutting expenses. <laughs> we, we, most Americans have a spending problem, not a income problem. Yeah. That, that, that's a theme that will come across a little bit later, but I, that's, and that's something that sets you apart differently too. And that's coming from Robert Kiyosaki. I mean, he talks about that too, right. Um, to, to a degree. Um, but I don't hear that from a lot of other folks who are in your, your, your position that, um, investing and making money is one thing. I mean, we've got this finite pool of money. We have to invest yeah. it, but like, I can't invest it if I've spent it on stuff. Things I don't need. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's not exciting. Um, no, this, is, watch this, me is, type this here, is a but. real live workshop. And again, I would tell folks, solopreneurs, somebody in a business that maybe were like me, they were just doing and not thinking they need to reach out to you. Cause I've gotten tremendous value just from the couple of you know hours I spent over the weekend and this. So, um, you know, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm getting tons of value. So thank you. Excellent. The, um, next thing I want to go into is the mission statement. So just so, um, the audience knows I sent Michael a template of a, it's a mission statement crafting template, which makes it easier for somebody who is, um, uh, wanting to craft a mission statement. Um, they can, they can just go through this process and, I thought about this too late, but I'm like, oh, this needs to be a downloadable piece on my website. So um, it will be there soon. You know, I'll, I'll put it up there and then other people can download that and a oh, few cool. other things. Um, but this this conversation has also helped me improve the way I can serve people. So awesome. um, people don't necessarily need to go through an entire branding process just to get started. The first thing they need to do is understand their mission um, mm -hmm. so that they can be driven. Here's what Michael wrote. He said the mission for One Rental at a Time. The one rental at a time mission is to help individuals with busy lives establish belief in themselves, confidence in their market, and most importantly, take focused action that saves time and provides a path to daily improvement on their financial future. So I underline these three phrases here because I think these are things that, that again, stand out in our core to what you do. Mm -hmm. Focused action saving time and daily improvement. It's like that continuous improvement of like, you said like 20 minutes a day is what you have to spend. You don't have to drop 10 grand and like spend hour after hour after hour. You need to commit to this. You need to understand what you need to do and focus on it daily to make that continual improvement. Um, so 
I think this is a really great mission statement. It's a, it's a, it's a solid beginning. We could probably improve this if we had more time and, and you and I can work on this. I can, I can send you back some notes after um, just so it gets a little bit closer and a little bit more focused so that you can say, these are the things I need to do. These are the things I'm currently doing. These are the things I'm great at. And here's the need that people have. But I think this is a, a fantastic start. And you, and you didn't start by saying, you know, my mission is to help everybody. You narrowed it down. You say individuals. Well, what kind of individuals? Those people with busy lives, you yeah. know, and what, what, what's their challenge? They don't just want to make more money. It's the thing about confidence and belief. So like those things are critical to narrow down to what type of person who's, who's done this. So it sounds like, you know, it's um, going to be people who, like you said, who are in the rat race, people who are, who went to college, thought that was the right path and said, you know, this is going to lead me to, to my financial freedom. But you're, you're starting to narrow down your audience, which is, which is great. So you can talk directly to those people. You can show them empathy because you've been in that situation. And you can speak to them in that way. And you do that on your show. I mean, I'm, I'm not like telling you something that you, you don't already know. It's like, it's stuff you're already doing. But to narrow it down to understand, like you start, you can start to use things like those, those, those concepts of being stuck in a W-2 job or the rat race. You can start to use that in your messaging because that's the way people feel who are going to come to you. Those are the challenges they face. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I like what you did there. Um, well, what's the next thing we did? I think it was jobs to be done. So. Yep. Let me, let me talk just a little bit about jobs to be done. Jobs to be done is a framework that helps you understand why people come to you. So if I went to a real estate meetup and I said to 10 different business owners there, and if I said, hey, why do you do what you do? Half of them, at least half of them would say, I do to, to make money. I'm here to make money. And that can't be the reason why. Hopefully that's the outcome of you doing your job well, is that you make money. And the reason it can't be the reason behind what you do is because if I turned around and asked those, those, those business leaders, if I asked their customers, why do you go to his business? They would not say, I go to give him money. Exactly. There has to be that alignment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of, of the exercises you've asked me to do so far, this one was enlightening, right? The mission statement, right? I have an MBA. So, you know, we, we, we build companies and mission and vision statements. And I, I was leading teams for 20 years. So I've done my mission statements, right? So that felt, it was, it's, it's never easy, but this jobs to be done, never thought this way. Of, of all the years, all the exercises that I've been through, I had never done an exercise like jobs to be done. So this was, uh, this was cool to go through. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It, it really helps you focus um, so, in, so in marketing, we talk about personas when we're trying to understand yes. your audience and personas is, is one way to do this, but it's, um, it, it tells us who somebody is. It doesn't tell us what's motivating them. It doesn't necessarily tell us what they need. Exactly. Of- I have done tons of personas. <laughs> I've built software. I've done all these things and it's always persona this and persona that I'm telling you folks flush that. Think about jobs to be done. It was so eye-opening. I had to. I actually had to step back and come back to this one, going, "This is different." So this cool. was cool. Yeah, excellent. Um, and so this is going to be another one of the things we have a downloadable template for because you've, you've very good me. idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we have a um, so the the template, the way this framework works is that uh, there's this statement and it has these brackets, and whoever is doing this uh, this uh, exercise would fill in. The, the, the information in the brackets. So for instance, this says, I believe a type of person who needs this thing experiences a problem because of this challenge. So um, hopefully everybody there at home can read it on the screen. Um, and I'll give you my website at the end. I'll give you to it right now. And you can, if you just email us, you can, I'll send this document to you. Um, it's it's trustdeepagency.com, trustdeepagency, one word. Dot com. But the, like, like you're saying, the, the, the value of this is really getting to understand why people need you. Yep. Um, it, it, it is, again, it's not because you have the product they need or the service they need. They need a solution to something. They need a job to be done. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. So, um, and you were really prolific here. You came up with six. Oh, wow. Um, I won't read all of them, but what I'm going to do is I went through and I highlighted phrases that I'm like, 
this goes right back to your mission or th this is the thing that I that comes across in your content in your media. Um, I think it could be bubbled up a little bit more in your in your marketing message, which we'll get to at, at the end. But you you talked about people who get lost in the hype and then they get this discouraged. That's the hype of the financial entertainers that you talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so what you're talking about here is a solution that you can provide. You can provide lack of hype and you can provide encouragement. It's the opposite of discouragement. You, you don't want people to see this monumental thing. Like, you know, the financial entertainers are promising this, this, this wonderful, this pot of gold, but it's like, it seems like impossible for me to get there, but you're doing the opposite of that. So that's something that you believe and it comes through in your, in your, um, in your content. Cool. The, the second one is you, you talk about the 20 minutes a day to learn a market. And I put, I highlighted the whole phrase and I, and I bolded a day yes. because it's the consistency of someone's effort that you believe is going to help them achieve it. And that's what you're all about. And that's why you do the show consistently. You don't, you don't publish it once every two weeks, right? I mean, you're there for people when they need you, which is every day. And like, if we think about like all the, the great performers in life, whether they're um, artists or, or um, athletes, it's the people, the people who achieve are those people who are consistent doing something day in and day out. Um, if anybody has a child who plays an instrument, like you, you know, <laughs> every day, <laughs> every day. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's that um, uh, continual effort that, that gets things done. Um, the next one, I highlighted this phrase, you talk about changing someone's entire financial future. And that to me is more than getting rich. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it, it's more than just retiring. Can you just like talk a little bit about what you mean about like changing somebody's entire financial future? Yeah. What I'm really trying to get at there is it's not about rich. It's not about being a millionaire. It's, it's none of these things. It's about having a more, it's just about having a better financial future. And that could mean just for rental properties. Maybe you still have to work 40 years, but when you get to retirement, you not only have what you had in your 401k or these other things, but now you have four free and clear properties that give you options, right? And again, my whole story usually starts with spending less, right? Again, we have an in, a spending problem, not an income problem. So right from the very beginning, you know, step two and everything I do, even my free 75 day challenges track your expenses because I don't get to financial freedom unless we take our expenses, which we're running at 100%, spend every penny we make. If we don't ratchet that back ultimately to 50%, I'm not where I'm at. So I don't wanna promise these magical things. I wanna tell them, you know what, if you wanna have a better financial future, let's stop spending so goddamn much money. You know, it's earn, save, invest, repeat. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yeah. And, and, and that's the message that comes across in, in your content. So like I said, you, you hadn't gone through this process before, but you're already doing a lot of this already. So it's, it's, it's fantastic to, to see like you, you've established this brand. This isn't your first day on the job. So, yeah. Um, the next thing I, I bolded was new investors waste time, lack focus and are hungry for a proven roadmap. The, the reason that a phrase like that is important is so we go through this process of jobs to be done so that you can understand or all business owners or leaders can understand what do people come to them for and how do I then take what I my skill set and apply that to a solution that that works for them. So you understand that people waste time, they lack focus and are hungry for a proven roadmap. So what did you do? You created a proven roadmap that, that focuses people and, and, and it doesn't take a ton of time. You say even 20 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So that's how this exercise uh, works. Um, the, the, the next one is here we get to your financial, uh, your fiscal responsibility uh, mindset. So mm -hmm. I highlighted most investors fail to realize that they have a spending problem. I would, I would change that to most people. Ah, most, there you go. Yeah. Most people good, fail to realize. Good yeah. um, so I think there are only some people who make it to investor, right? I mean, like a lot of no, people are, you're right. oh, all of us are just working, mm -hmm. but, um, but th that's an interesting thing. And that's going to come through and it's going to be a differentiator to your brand in the, the content. Um, I've never heard other than, a, a, 
I think like somebody like Clark Howard, if you, if you know who Clark Howard is, I'm like, he talks about like spending versus saving things like that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't get that from a lot of other um, real estate professionals. So um, that is something that's completely unique to you. And I think it'd be great if that can come through a little bit more because people are going to see it's, it's, you're not just trying to sell the book. You're trying to give them real life advice. So you might say to them, hey, even if you never buy a, a, an investment property, just understand the simple principle. 50% of your money has to be saved or else you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, I like it. Never thought of that. Okay, um, cool. The, the last one is we need to educate young people that the rat race is real and it's in their early financial decisions that set them up for constant financial stress. Yes. That's huge. I mean, like, I mean, is this a situation you were in or do you just see other people? Well, this is, this is a, you know, when I, so I, I get to 45, I retire. This is nowhere on my radar. It's the last two and a half years kind of being at this every day and just seeing what's happening around me. I really now truly believe I can relate to being that kid who was told, go to school, get a good education, get a good job, move forward. And again, I never thought the rat race was real. I, I, it wasn't a, it wasn't a concept. I didn't even know I was in the rat race and I was like the big rat. I was just running faster and faster and faster and getting nowhere. So it is upon reflection. It is upon appreciating the people I communicate with that, you know what, you really, you know, you can get out. And again, it came from when I had a conversation with high school seniors, I asked this simple question. I said, how many of you think you can live on two grand a month? And all of them raised their hand. Think about that. Two grand a month, right? They're high school seniors. So fairly, you know, they don't know what rent is. They don't know what pg and is, right? They don't know what life is, but it's the mindset. In we got to realize that the rat race begins the day you leave school, whether that's drop out of high school, high school, drop out of college, college, master's, doctorate. Whenever you leave school, you hold a ticket to the rat race. And most of us, myself included, jump on that wheel and start running as fast as possible. We have a little success. And then we expand our financial means. We buy a nicer car. I bought a $40,000 car when I made 30 grand a year. How stupid was that? <laughs> yes, I got the loan. No big, yeah. I mean, I have done some really stupid things. And I just made the, I just made the wheel bigger and I had to run faster. And we don't have to do that. So this is a particular passion of mine. Um, you know, if we can, because again, you're 18 years old, you're about to graduate. You don't want to go to college because college isn't for everyone. I firmly believe if you keep your expenses low and your commitments low, you can be financially free by 25. Wow. I mean, that's an amazing thing. And once you're financially free, man, the world gets good. But, yeah. you know, most people do stupid things. They buy a car they can't afford. The, the problem with the car is not only that, but then you have to buy insurance and then the goddamn tires cost $1,200. And then you got to buy, you know, super unleaded instead of, you know, it's just all these other things come and then you got to go get it detailed instead of washed with a hose. And, oh, yeah. so it, it's um, painful memories that I'm trying to help kids and other adults help their kids not do. Yeah. You know, that's the, the thing that is interesting here is that you, you, brought this instead of like uh, in some of these you, you talk about um either actions that people take but the last word here is stress and stress is a feeling mm -hmm. the the, re the way we make decisions is based on our emotions and feelings the because the part of our brain and this is something that we talk about at our um um at, at the branding agency it's not i'm not a i'm not a scientist or anything but we, <laughs> we talk about where decisions get made, because that helps us understand how we can um, become trustworthy brands to, to, to consumers. So we try to understand where decisions are made. It's made in a part of the brain called the, the limbic system. It's like the oldest part of our brain. Hmm. And that, that part of the brain functions on, um, on emotion. You know, it's the emotional center of our brain, but it also controls where, um, where decisions are made. So it's like, if, if you can help people understand this idea of, of, of stress and, and, and can you connect with them on, on that, you can help convert more people to as, as customers, you know? So um, it, it's this idea of explaining to them the thing that they're feeling and showing them that you can help resolve that. So, so saying to somebody, hey, I can help you make a lot of money. I can help you become 
financial fin financially free. I can help you, you know, retire early. Those are wonderful. But the thing that motivates people is the feeling. Stress is a huge motivator and it's an awful feeling. So mm -hmm. if, if you can bring that across in, in more of your marketing, I think you can, you can tap into something that people, uh, people feel, you know, um, being rich is, is, is wonderful or being financially solvent is wonderful, but being broke and being stressed is, is like way worse. Like the, 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 the pressure of that is, 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 is more powerful than the, the possible reward of being financially free, I, I believe. So that's something that you can, you can dial up. Um, in, I like in, it. Thank in, you. In your marketing. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you, you, you tapped into that. Um, okay. Here's the part of the program where I surprise <laughs> you with things. I like it. So um, I've come up with some core values for your, your business. Um, and I want you to look at these, challenge them, yeah, sure. see where we can add things. And I just want your audience to know the, the reason we want to come up with core values is because our actions as a business, as a person, as any sort of entity are based on the values that we have. These are the guiding principles that steer us to do the things we have. So if you're a, a, a business leader and you're trying to achieve more success, and, and but you don't understand the values and you haven't like codified them, you haven't written them down, you don't have that, that framework to say, every decision I make has to be based on these values because these are the things I believe in and these are the things I do well and these are the things that align with my customers. That's why doing this exercise of coming up with your core values is hugely important. And again, if you and I had four hours to sit and work together, we would do this together. But since we didn't, I did, I did this and I made some assumptions. Okay. The four core values that I've come up with is that like, you want to be informative, you want to be realistic, you want to be inspiring, and you also want to be practical. So I've given some short definitions here. We could always add on more to this, put more flesh around them, but just, just for the, the sake of... Um, going through these uh, on your show here informative is like your purpose is to educate it's not to entertain mm -hmm. you you prefer substance not flash does that sound yeah for sure about right nailed it yep yeah um the the second one is about being realistic so in all of your content you talk about things that are achievable by most people and you and I don't, I don't know. Like, so during this call, I know you said everybody. So maybe I need to, to, to change that. Could, if that's something you believe, so everybody. Um, but it's, it's not driven by this, this, this concept of wild wealth. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's driven by like something that is a, achievable, something that is real and that I can do it. Um, I can start today and make it happen. Like I, I was thinking like your brand, whether I'm enjoying the website or your book or a course, it's a hype free zone. Mm -hmm. You, totally. You're not promising things that like, like, like it's like one in a million. It's not like winning the lottery. It's yeah. like real stuff. Yeah, oh, totally. Um, the next one is about inspiring. And this is something you said at the top of the show. Um, you want to inspire people and inspiring people in a way that is, is, is realistic and, and honest. So, um, so something you say is we all have the ability and resources to change our financial destination. So I forgot where I read it, but you, you said like you didn't have when you started you didn't have like the assets to um buy big buildings or yeah. um you said i these are the resources i have available what can i make happen and you made it happen yep so th that's an inspiring message and, and it comes through in in some of your content and be great if it, it came through um consistently in, in some of the other stuff okay um and the last one is is practical you 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 are actionable simplified you offer step-by-step -step guidance that achieves measurable results and measurable results is something that's important because I think so, something you talked about earlier, and I know this for a fact that I've seen, like I'll read books on things and it's like, okay, great. It's a, um, it's, it's something that's given me a, an idea of something, but I don't have a way to know if I'm doing the right thing. Hmm. Something that's important to you, um, at least that I'm getting is that this idea of measurable results and you want to help people see what those are and, and, and plot their course. Yep. Um, and of course you're, you're honest about people who spend too much and they're not investing enough. So there are probably other core values, but I'll show you in a second how we take these core values and we apply them to the messaging that's on your website. And if, and if somebody 
listening wanted to have a similar conversation, I can do that with them as well. You know, if they sent me like a link to their website or some of their marketing materials, I can go through and say, here's where you might be able to improve this. Here's how your values make sense. How, here's how they, they have to come through. Because that's how you're going to communicate the intention that you have to your customers is like your marketing message. And unfortunately, not everybody gets to have a conversation with you like I had. Um, and you're not always going to get to talk to somebody one on one or, you know, they're not going to see every podcast episode, but but your website is there. Um, and so they're going to come to that and they're, you're going to want them to learn something by by reading through. So if we go to this section, um, so I'm calling this how to better activate your brand. And so um, defining your brand is one phase of what we do. Articulating it is another phase. That's where we, we codify it. We, we create like a brand cookbook. Like these are all the things that make you you and you follow this and you're gonna get to the result. But then there's the actual activating of it, which is um, putting, putting all that brand into practice. And so that's creating content or informing the actions that your employees might have with, with, with your customers. Um, so the first thing I'm suggesting is to be more specific about how you're different than others who are in the same space and to create a succinct call to action. I wonder if I can, um, I would love to be able to bring up your homepage here, but I'd have, how do I do it? Hold on a second. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna share your, your homepage for a second. Okay, sure. All right, so. Um, all right. All right. So are you seeing the homepage now? Still the word word doc. All right. Let's uh, please hold. Please hold. Uh, Doing this in real time. See, this is what happens when you do a live. Yeah. How, how about now? There you go. That's the website. Yep. Okay. So you, you're seeing the website. I am. Yes. Awesome. So um, the subhead there, the first message that that people see, it says the journey to financial independence through real estate, right under your, the yep. name of your business. I would suggest revising that mm -hmm. so that it has the attributes of your values in it. Something like, and this becomes a call to action. If you said something like achieve financial independence with a proven simplified real estate investment process. Now I'm gonna call out some words there. The word uh, achieve supports the value of inspiring the word proven would, ins would would support the value of realistic simplified and process support the value of practical not all of your values are going to be expressed in every every piece of communication but you have to have something there supporting it um okay i like that next whoops I am going to scroll down to the welcome message here. So um, again, I'm going to be a little bit critical, but no, um, <laughs> so you, you, something that comes through in everything you, you do is um, this simplified message, right? So um, you want things to be um, less cumbersome or not to be as intimidating. I think the phrase, there's so much to see here is counter to the message of simplification and mm. achievability. But yeah. what you're saying is, what you want to say is that we've got so many resources. Please come and enjoy. You know, like like a buffet. Help yourself. Yeah. There you go. I like that. Okay. I, I think you could you could revise this um, and craft the message around something like, first time investors can achieve real financial growth through the comprehensive resources we've put together. So, first of all, name who we're talking to. First time investors. Tell them what what can happen. They can achieve real growth, and tell them how through these comprehensive resources. So um, it's, it's, it's wonderful that you have that message there, but, but I think you can, um, you, you can plus it up and yeah, make it right. more impactful to people so that they, they're more convinced that they're in the right place and it's going to be a simple process. Thank you, I like that. Yeah, and then the next thing, um, I'm gonna scroll down to the book description that's here, okay. Um, so I would, I would um, dial up the actionableness of your process. For instance, you know, mm -hmm. it, it says um, this book reveals. Um, so reveal is a really passive verb. So reveal means like I'm sitting there and somebody takes the, the, the pulls the curtain back. I haven't done any action. Nothing mm -hmm. has happened to me. I've just observed something. So I would suggest changing reveals with 
something like guides you through a proven process. This book guides you through a proven process on buying and holding rental properties, period. It'll create a second income that in time will allow you. So it's a, a, a minor thing, but it's Oh yeah, very, it's, a lot it's better. helping people steer people in, 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 the, in the right direction and get them off to a, a good start. Does that, does that sound no, okay? It certainly does. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, the, the next thing, uh, it's that phrase, what's stopping you? So there, there are pluses to a phrase like that and there are minuses. So what's stopping you is um, kind of open-ended. And so anybody who rolls into the site and reads that, you'd hope that they would put in their own hurdle, but they're not going to do that because people are reading this. They're not going to, they're not going to think, because yeah. I, I don't think that phrase, what's stopping you is thought provoking enough. Okay. The thing is, you know what's stopping them. So you've articulated it all, all already in this call. You've talked about, and in some, some of the conversations we had before, you said people have a lack of market knowledge. People think it's too complicated. People lack time. So what I would do is I would use those challenges that you've identified in the in the jobs to be done exercise, um, I would use them here. I like as, it. As as consumers, we we react and respond to things like when somebody's holding up a mirror and we see that it's it's true about ourselves. So if it said, "Think you don't have enough time," I'm like, "Geez, that's me. I don't think I have enough time. Think it's too complicated." Oh yeah, of course. I think it's too complicated. We we can't change our behavior unless we recognize the, the flaws in that behavior. So mm. if, if, if somebody sees like this points out to them that they don't have enough time or that they're, they're, they think it's too complicated and you have a way to resolve those issues, we have brought them further down the continuum of, you know, from, from prospect to, to customer. That's, that's something simple changes. And it, it all falls out of the exercise that we did. Cool. Okay. You, you don't mind that we're doing this, do you? No, I, I think everything you said is very, uh, I like it. Yes. Um, I've got one more thing to share with you and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll turn it back, the show back over to you, but the YouTube channel description. So here we're, we're talking about, um, you, you're talking about yourself here where we really could be focused on somebody else's needs. So it says we have a really great YouTube channel, uh, which we update daily awesome point to mention it's updated daily. We cover an array of topics regarding buying and holding properties. We also interview a number of great guests and industry leaders. Be sure to check us out, subscribe and become part of the, uh, the family. So you haven't told me what I'm going to achieve from this. I mean, so you cover, you cover buy and hold real estate. Well, what do I get out of that? You cover, uh, you interview guests. Uh, what do I get out of that? So I would just suggest this um, you, you turn the focus to the benefits that the viewers are going to get, things that will align with your brand and the values. For instance, you could have three bullet points. The first one could be quick lessons you can implement today. Yeah. Why? You know, so this is because your audience, they're busy, busy professionals and they need to take a focused approach. Quick lessons you can implement today. Second bullet point could be something like gain confidence with real world expert guidance. Okay, so you, you mentioned that there, there's going to be experts on the show. I'm going to gain the confidence because of things that they've done. Um, people need to know that it's possible and how to do it. Uh, the yep. last bullet point you could have here is like build, build your knowledge every day. Like if you said subscribe to build your knowledge every day. So you didn't just invite them to subscribe like you're doing here. You're giving them a reason to benefit why I'm like, oh, geez. I can't just watch Michael once every other week or once a month. I'm missing out on all the, the experts and the, yeah. and the insight he's providing every single day. I like that. Okay. So th that's just a, a quick, a, a quick run through of uh, some, some changes you can make based on um, a branding exercise that shows you some values and building messaging off the values, things that are going to resonate more closely with with um, your your audience members. Now this has been this has been great. Lots of things I need to be doing. I could do a better job. Right again, as I mentioned earlier, I I I frankly haven't looked at my one rental at a time dot com website in six months, nine months probably. Right. Uh, and why did I create a website? Well, everybody has a website, right? It wasn't purpose. It wasn't intentional. I haven't used it as my as I've learned and evolved with this one rental at a time story and journey. So this has been wildly helpful. Uh, you know, after we close, we'll talk about next steps. 
uh, but definitely going to go next steps with you. But how can other solopreneurs, people who have maybe been like me, doers that, that need this branding help or somebody looking to start a side hustle? A lot of people in this recession are looking to start a side hustle. They need to come to you so they can efficiently use their time and really look for maximum impact. So how do you want them to reach out or follow you? How do you want that to happen? Sure. So um, you can get in touch with us on our website, which is trustdeepagency.com. There's contact information there. And my email address is just Stace, S-T-A-C-E at trustdeepagency.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm occasionally on Bigger Pockets, but the website is the absolute best place. Um, I do want your audience to know that like the branding process is, is very helpful. But even if they don't go through that, understanding their mission is the first step to moving down the path toward connecting deeply with people and finding customers who really need you and you can people who you can really help. So um, whether they do that with me or somebody else, um, or if they come to the website for the, the downloadable mission statement template, that gives you a great grounding in which direction you're heading in. Yeah, I just want to give you a plug again, Stace. It's not, I mean, everybody talks mission statements. It's one of those, you know, MBA things. Everybody has a mission statement. Next is vision statement. <laughs> that jobs to be done, that twist from persona to jobs to be done. Um, again, I had, I was paid lots of money to do that on new stuff. And just that mental shift in the jobs to be done was worth this experience. So I, that cool. template would be the one I would rush to go get, frankly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so- we, we should have, we'll have, hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have that on the, on the website. Um, yeah, Send me that, the link whenever it's up there. And then I will go back to the video and add it to this video. Oh, that, that's fantastic. It really shifts your thinking from a, a person to a, to a, to an action and actions are how things get done in this world. Totally agree. All right, man. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. All right. Take care.